Dio ha tanto amato il mondo da dare il Figlio Unigenito. Qui c'è il cuore del Vangelo e qui c'è il fondamento della nostra gioia. Il contenuto del Vangelo, infatti, non è una idea o una dottrina. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Gesù, il figlio che il Padre ci ha donato perché noi avessimo la vita. Gesù è il fondamento della nostra gioia. Non è una bella teoria su come essere felici, ma è sperimentare di essere accompagnati e amati nel cammino della vita. Ha tanto amato il mondo da dare il suo figlio. Soffermiamoci, fratelli e sorelle, un momento su questi due aspetti. Ha tanto amato e ha dato. Prima di tutto, Dio ha tanto amato. Queste parole che Gesù rivolge a Nicodemo, un anziano giudeo che voleva conoscere il Maestro, ci aiutano a scorgere il vero volto di Dio. Egli da sempre ci ha guardati con amore e per amore è venuto in mezzo a noi nella carne del Figlio Suo. E Lui ci è venuto a cercare nei luoghi in cui ci siamo smarriti. In Lui è venuto a rialzarci dalle nostre cadute. In Lui ha pianto le, no le nostre lacrime e guarito le nostre piaghe. In Lui ha benedetto per sempre la nostra vita. Chiunque crede in Lui, dice il Vangelo, non va perduto. In Gesù Dio ha pronunciato la parola definitiva sulla nostra vita. Tu non sei perduto, tu sei amato, sempre amato. Se l'ascolto del Vangelo e la pratica della nostra fede non ci allargano il cuore per farci cogliere la grandezza di questo amore e magari ci vogliamo in una religiosità, seriosa, triste, chiusa, allora è segno che dobbiamo fermarci un po' e ascoltare di nuovo l'annuncio della buona notizia. Dio ti ama così tanto da darti tutta la sua vita. Non è un God so loved the world that he gave his only son. This is the heart che si convolge nella nostra storia. Of the gospel. This is the source of our joy. The message of the gospel is not an idea or a doctrine. It is Jesus himself. The Son of the Father has given us so that we might have life. The source of our life is not an elegant theory, but how to find happiness, but the actual experience of being accompanied and loved throughout the journey of life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son Let us dwell on these two thoughts for a minute. God so loved and God gave. First of all, God so loved. Jesus' words to Nicodemus, a Jewish elder who wanted to know the Master, help us to see the true face of God. He has always looked at us with love and for the sake of love. He came among us in the flesh of his Son. In Jesus, he went in search of us when we were lost. In Jesus, he came to raise us up when we fell. In Jesus, he wept with us and healed our wounds. In Jesus, he blessed our life forever. The gospel tells us that whoever believes in him will not perish. In Jesus, God spoke the definitive word about our life. You are not lost, you are loved, loved forever. If hearing the gospel and practicing our faith don't enlarge our hearts and make us grasp the immensity of God's love, maybe because we prefer a glum, sorrowful, and self-absorbed religiosity, then this is a sign that we need to stop and listen again to the preaching of the good news. 
God loves you so much that he gave you his entire life. He is not a God who looks down upon us from on high, but a loving Father who becomes part of our history. He is not a God who takes pleasure in the death of sinners, but a Father concerned that no one should be lost. He is not a God who condemns, but a Father who saves us with the comforting embrace of his love. We now come to the second aspect, God gave his Son. Precisely because he loves us so much, God gives himself. He offers us his life. Those who love always come out of themselves. Love always offers itself, gives itself, expends itself. This is the power of love. It shatters the shell of our selfishness, breaks out of our carefully constructed security zones, tears down walls and overcomes fears, so as to give freely of itself. That is how lovers are. They prefer to risk self-giving over self-preservation. And that is why God comes to us, because he loved us. His love is so great that we cannot fail to give himself to us. When the people were attacked by poisonous serpents in the desert, God told Moses to make the bronze serpent. In Jesus, however, exalted on the cross, he himself came to heal us of the venom of death. He became sin to save us from sin. God does not love us in words. He gives us his Son, so that whoever looks at him and believes in him will be saved. The more we love, the more we become capable of giving. That is also the key to understanding our life. It is wonderful to meet people who love one another and share their lives in love. We can say about them what we say about God. They so love each other that they give their lives. It is not only what we can make or earn that matters. In the end, it is the love we are able to give. This is the source of joy. God so loved the world that he gave his son. Here we see the meaning of the church's invitation this Sunday. Rejoice, rejoice and be glad, you who mourn. Find contentment and consolation. I think of what we saw a week ago in Iraq. A people who had suffered so much rejoiced and were glad, thanks to God and his merciful love. Sometimes we look for joy where it is not to be found in illusions that vanish, in dreams of glory, in the apparent security of material possessions, in the cult of our image. But life teaches us that true joy comes from realizing that we are loved gratuitously, knowing that we are not alone, having someone who shares our dreams, and to, when we experience shipwreck, is there to help us and lead us to a safe harbor. Sono passati 500 anni da quando per la prima volta l'annuncio cristiano è arrivato nelle Filippine. Avete ricevuto la gioia del Vangelo, che Dio ci ha amato a tal punto da dare il suo figlio per noi. E questa gioia si vede nel nostro popolo. Dear brothers and sisters, 500 years have passed since the Christian message first arrived in the Philippines. You received the joy of the gospel, the good news that God so loved us that he gave his son for us. And this joy is evident in your people. We see it in your eyes, on your faces, in your songs, and in your prayers. And he's saying your women are banners of joy here in Rome, because where they go to work, they work, but they sow the faith, men and women of you here in Rome. He, he said this is, this is um, an illness that goes from one generation to the other, but it's a good illness that you need to pass on. It, it comes from the gift you received 500 years ago and that you bear even to today. You received the joy of the gospel, that, you, that God so loved the world that he gave his son. And this joy is evident in your people. We see it in your eyes, on your faces, in your songs, and in your prayers. 
I want to thank you for the joy you bring to the whole world and to our Christian communities. I recall the many beautiful experiences in families here in Rome, but also throughout the world, where your discreet and hardworking presence has become a testimony of faith, a witness of faith in Mary and Joseph's style. God loves to bring the joy of faith through humble, hidden, courageous, and persevering service. On this very important anniversary for God's holy people in the Philippines, I also want to urge you to persevere in the work of evangelization, which is not the same as proselytism. It's something else. The Christian proclamation that you have received is something that needs to be constantly brought to others. The gospel message of God's closeness cries out to be expressed in love for our brothers and sisters. God desires that no one perish. For this reason, he asks the church to care for those who are hurting and living on the fringes of life. God so loves us that he gives himself to us, and the church has this same mission. She is sent not to judge, but to welcome, not to impose, but to sow. The church is called not to condemn, but to bring Christ who is our salvation. I know that this is the pastoral program of your church, a missionary commitment that involves everyone and reaches everyone. Never be discouraged as you walk this path. Never be afraid to proclaim the gospel, to serve and to love. With your joy, you will help people to say of the church, too, she so loved the world. How beautiful and attractive is a church that loves the world without judging, and a church that gives herself to the world. Dear brothers and sisters, I hope that it will be like this in the Philippines and in every part of the earth. Pope Francis speaking beautiful words to the Filipino community gathered here in Rome to celebrate the 500th anniversary of the arrival in Christian of Christianity in the Philippines a celebration which will officially begin on Easter Sunday in the Philippines and will continue through next year. The faith first arrived in the Philippines on the island of Cebu as Ferdinand Magellan disembarked. And it was later Spanish missionaries who carried out the evangelization of this people to the point where Christianity is, has firmly taken root not only in that beloved nation but wherever Filipinos are present today throughout the world as our Holy Father alluded to in his homily. A beautiful gift that the Filipino people bring with them. <laughs> 